All right, so Matthew 19, everybody, let's start again. Let's go. So from verse 3, that's where we started yesterday. Thank you, DJ. It says, the Pharisees also came to him doing what? So we learned something yesterday that whenever you are studying a, a text or a scripture or a concept, you need to read the whole story and know what was going on. Don't just pick one verse out of context. Every time we pick one verse out of context, we have actually murdered that verse. We have lost the message in the verse. And we can always misconstrue it and misunderstand it and now enter trouble. So it's always good to get the gist. So he said they came to the Pharisees, came to him, doing what? Testing him. And saying to him, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just what? Any reason. DJ, give me normal King James, if you don't mind. Divorce for any reason. So the next verse said, and he answered and said unto them, have ye not read? Let me ask your neighbor, have you not read? <laughs> or let's ask it in today's English, what have you read? We came with a lot of books here. I still notice people don't buy books. They don't invest in knowledge. What pains me sometimes when people don't invest in knowledge is when they act shocked that the marriage is not working. They're acting like they too, they don't know why. <laughs> I don't like that thing. Did you prepare? You say, why? You say, I shocked it didn't work. How can it work? What preparation did you put in? It will just work. Nothing just works. Nigerians are like that naturally. We know why don't I pray the most in World Cup. Have you seen us in World Cup? Before the match, we'll pray. After the match, we'll pray. Have we ever won anything useful? <laughs> we are shocked. How can it work? What's surprising you? And the one that pays me is during group stage, we'll not stop doing permutations. If Cote d'Ivoire draw, <laughs> and Ghana lose, and these people grace, we'll qualify. <laughs> Nigeria. Hey. If somebody getting what I'm saying, we came with books. Please, I beg you, read. Not because I'm the author. If you don't even like my own, read buy other good ones. But learn. That's one of the things that helped me in my marriage. I learned. This is not, there's no mystery to life. If somebody get what I'm saying, there is what? No mystery to life. This marriage thing that is confusing many people, it's as, it's as simple and as clear as daylight if you will give it some attention to learn. Because it's one of the things you can't afford to be ignorant about. There are a few things in life you can't be ignorant about. One of it is your health. You say, I don't care. <laughs> when your health is ready for you, you go care. Because it will, it will ground you to a halt. No matter how important you are, you will sit down. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you can't say you, you don't care. On that thing you can't say you don't care about is money. Money too is brutal. It will humble you. You don't care. Your landlord will care. <laughs> Your children's school will care. Is somebody get what I'm saying? So there are things you can't form carelessness about. On that one is marriage. It can mess you up. You can, you can literally almost lose your mind. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Those of you that follow my YouTube, remember I interviewed one of my um, senior friends in the ministry that was divorced. And he shared how that he almost ran mad. Had accidents many times because he was thinking he would be crying and driving. And he's, when he hits other cars, he will know that he's not concentrating. He almost ran mad. Most times we don't talk about the mental impact. So please get these books. They are all a blessing. Who should I marry? 25 wrong reasons, A to Z. When am I ready? Loads and loads of good books. They'll be a blessing to you. He said, I don't like to read. Still get it. You can read one chapter at a time. Sometimes even two lines that will bless you. Adding to your knowledge is always important. What verse did we stop? I can't hear you. What verse did we stop? He said, and he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them what? Yeah. And female. Very important. Hmm. He also went ahead to say, um, and he said, and said, for this cause shall a man do what? Now, those that were here yesterday, we established something. These guys came to test him, and they were asking a question that, can we divorce our wives for any reason, any reason at all? That was the question. Jesus didn't answer the question. When they asked Jesus' question, his answer was, marriage is beautiful. 
His answer was, marriage is a beautiful thing. He said, go back to the design. Say, from the beginning, it was not so. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So, when, he, when they asked him, he began to show us the design of marriage. The first design he mentioned was the fact that marriage is made up of man and a woman. That looks simple, but it's deep. It's deep. It's made up of a man and a woman. Because for a union to be really beautiful the way God made it, it's always best when it's made up of a man and a woman. Not a man and a man. Not a woman and a woman, but a man and what? A woman. You see, some of these stories pastor shared today are important. Because I, I can bet, inside some, most of those quarrels, and inside most of those um, conflicts, it's because people don't understand that a man and a woman is wired differently. And it's very important. He said, he made them male and female. If you see the next verse... After that, he said something. DJ, bring the next verse after that. He said, and for this cause shall who? A man. Leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to who? His wife. Stop there for a minute. Why didn't he say, um, therefore shall a man or woman leave their father and mother and cleave to each other? He specifically said a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. Now, if they didn't say cleave to his wife, if they said, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, then we could interpret that word man there to be mankind. Am I correct? Just like what the Bible said, you know, a man should not, there are some man in like that that means the whole of mankind. But this is specific. He said a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to who? His wife. So this is specific male man. Why? This is him already breaking down the difference between male and female. The way a woman is wired emotionally, and one of the things you must understand is how you are wired naturally and how you should develop yourself as you grow. It confuses people. That's why a couple can be seriously in love before marriage, before wedding, and maybe they get married, one hour into it, they are saying it's a mistake. It's because they didn't know how to transition between their first natural instincts and how you should grow. You, there's a way you are designed naturally. It's useful for your starting. But as you grow, you must now learn to tune and adjust. So I'll give you examples. This same scripture. It said, a man shall leave his father and mother. The main people that struggle with leaving their father and mother is first a man. A, the way a woman is wired. When she's a young girl, she's very attached to her parents, especially her dad. So if you check most scenarios, the father is close to the girls. Do you notice? This is how we are wired naturally. The man we have a soft spot for his daughter. Daughter we have a love for his, his dad. And that's the normal home where there are two parents that are sensible. Yeah, if you have a toxic uh, father, you can run away. You know, all those kind of things. But normally, the way, the way it goes, the daughter will be close to the father. Um, the way the father will treat the son, the father is not going to usually be soft with the son. Most fathers are not. Because he's preparing you for life. He knows that come. <coughs> Nobody. Send you. The earlier you grow, become strong. So that's his approach to, to his sons. He knows how life is going to treat them. But he generally soft towards his daughters. So the daughter is very attached to, his, to their dad. But you see, as women grow to a certain age, they naturally want a home. So their attachment is more to a marriage. A woman has no issue leaving father and mother. She wants to marry and have her own children. It is the men that struggle with leaving the nest because what their mother provides for them is that unconditional love, unconditional support. Men crave that. So men are the ones that they usually need to want that leave your mother and mother. Cleave to your wife. Wives have left. <laughs> wife have watched so many movies, so many romance novels. She's eager to go and find her husband. Now, so that's why you notice, in case you don't know what I'm saying, I'll give you more, you know, I have most scientific and statistical information on both scripture. That's why when a young man proposes to a woman, you see the way the woman rejoices. She's craving marriage. She's not saying, oh, I'm going to leave my father. No. <laughs> she has left them long 
long ago. She's craving marriage. And I've preached in different continents. The, the reaction is, is the same whenever a woman is proposed to. <gasps> she can die. In any, in any race, whether it's white, Chinese, Indian, they are the same reaction. Because a woman craves to go and see. She's not attached to her. When she reaches a certain age, she's no more trying to stay with her father. No. She lives in her mind emotionally. She's looking for a husband. But you see, the boys and the men, because they continue to be attached, their mother still supplies them. That umbilical cord, when it's removed physically, many times the marriage is not removed. Many times as the boy grows, it's not removed emotionally. Sometimes it's not removed financially. Many times it's not removed spiritually. Because that mother is praying for that boy. So the attachment is still heavy with the boy. So the scripture is clear about it. Who we need to help to live. Who we need to tell to leave because he doesn't know. I dare you post this video or something like this on your post and say, um, every man should see his wife as priority over his mother. Go and jump on comment section. So you understand what I'm telling you. Many men, no matter their age, don't want to leave their mother. No matter their age. You will see the argument. They say, my wife is uh, it's not my blood. My mother is my blood. That's what you'll be hearing. So they are the ones God told Leave father and mother. God doesn't have to tell women. God doesn't waste words. They not have to tell women. When I've left, they are looking for husband. Now, on that challenge with women and men, the way they are wired, a man, the design, I'm just trying to say, the, the design is beautiful. The design is beautiful. The way God wired men, as men and women are growing, everything about them is different. It's changing. It's, the only time they are together is like the first few months that I, I like. As they start to grow, everything just begins to change. So they found out that a woman's prefrontal cortex, the part of a human being that is very security and safety conscious, a woman's own develops very fast. So when she sees a small child, it's developed. So she hates bruises. She hates wounds. If a boy and a girl are on this stage and they want to go down, the girl will go and pass the stairs. The boy will jump. The boy's own prefrontal cortex, it does not develop <laughs> till when he's very old. Seriously. So he, he's, not, he's not afraid of danger. Now, why is this important? Why is this important? The role he plays in life, he can't be risk adverse. This is important. A woman is risk adverse. A woman doesn't like risk. In fact, a woman major, major need is security. Men are usually not wired that way. Men like risk. They are risk aligned because their job involves exploring. The ancient men live in a cave, live in a tent, live under a tree. The woman takes care of the family life, but if they are going to survive, if they are going to eat, that man must be willing to go into the unknown. And if all your senses are correct, you will not go into the unknown. So God did it, wired this in a way. A man is not afraid to go and explore. Something in him is ready to go, but a woman has totally a different orientation. She doesn't want to take risk. She's wired that way because after the first stage when they are both single, once they start having kids, her sense of security even heightens. If you've ever read dogs or anything before, you see that even the female dog, the behavior is different before puppies and after puppies. Your own dog can bite you once it has puppies. Your own dog that you could play, choo, 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 choo. when it has puppy, you better respect the fact because her senses are heightened for security. So, because her next role, after wife, a woman's next role is motherhood. Her security has now increased because she's now looking after the kids. Chickens have the same thing. Dog, animal, all of them are like that. If, and humans too are like that. That is why, if you are not careful as a married couple, when the season changes from when we are both single to when we start having kids, most mothers begin to give more attention. This is their instincts, I'm telling you. They give more attention to the kids. Many marriages have cracked once kids came. Because the women, most men don't even know. There are even some women that they lose sexual pleasure or interest in sex once they start having kids. The, the, the instinct that kicks in is the motherhood instinct, which heightens their sense of security and protection. So they start giving all the attention to the children and they neglect the man. That's where most men go astray. Yes. 
because the wife is giving little or zero attention. Because her instincts have kicked in. So I'm showing you the design, but there are times you need to go, there are seasons you must go against the design. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Because that's why you're a human. You should be able to manage it. You can't always flow with the go or go with the flow. Are you getting what I'm saying? So her instincts moves from being a wife to being a mother. <laughs> My wife too did that to me. I know she was surprised, but I'll say it, honey, don't worry. I'll report you. When we're single, Pastor, this girl was the coolest wife. I mean, when we're just newly married, coolest wife ever. There's no bad thing she didn't go and do with me. No bad thing. Sometimes, you know, I used to ride big motorcycles, those power bikes. At night, 10 o'clock, we we'll leave our house on the mainland. If those of you that have never lived in Lagos, we we'll leave our house on the mainland, ride bike in the night to the island to go and buy ice cream. <laughs> this bad girl will wear her jeans, wear everything, follow me, enter night, we we'll ride motorcycle. She was a bad girl. <laughs> she was ready to do everything because she was at the stage of husband. See, women have attachment throughout their life, but the attachment changes. First attachment is to their mom and father, father and mother. That's first attachment. And women feel deeply. That's why you must not hurt your daughters. Because they will carry that pain throughout their marriage, I mean, throughout their adult life. How you treat it. So that attachment will now move from father to husband. It will also be that intense when it's marriage. So she was at that stage. Ah, she'll follow me anywhere. We'll go to Dubai. We'll rent the bike. How many of you have, okay, I don't know. How many of you have heard of Hafit Mountain before? Hafit Mountain. Ah, well, it's what, it's, when most Nigerians go to Dubai, they go to a shopping mall. There are, there are many fun places in UAE that many, really white people I meet there when we go there. It's a mountain, beautiful mountain, and it has curvy. It's like some of the mountains in Abuja here. It has, but they did, they've done road to the top, and it's curvy like this. You'll be seeing deep gully. And we rode bike on the, with, a, with a group of bikers. We rode to that top of that mountain. View, view, ah! You behind this girl, follow me out the buttons. <laughs> I can go on and on. We did many crazy things. She was at following your husband. <laughs> Until children came. Children came. To even get her now. <laughs> She's always saying, two of us can't be doing crazy things together. We have children. <laughs> because that's a woman's natural instinct. And God designed it that way for safety. If two of you do crazy things, you're going to leave your nest to be hot. She's saying, yes, now. Yes, I'm not going to. You're correct now. I'm just saying the gist. And if you're not careful, it can lead to a strain. I, I had to kick my son out of the bed. Pastor, if you know how many couples are facing the issue of newborn baby sleeping on the bed, Pastor knows what I'm talking about. If you have any pastor, you know this thing. Because that woman's in six, that, oh, let's just leave here. Her attachment has moved. The man is now secondary. Those babies and those children are her priority. If, and she's looking for, see, the way it works, our instincts move us, then we start to look for logic to back up what we're doing. It's just your emotions and your instincts moving you. There's no logic to it. So, they are so young. He was coughing. He, was, he will not die. <laughs> Let him go to his room. Let him sleep here. There are many couples they've not had sex one year. Why? The baby's lying down. I want big man. I've seen big men beg. <laughs> big man, white beard like this. <laughs> but the baby has been sleeping for five years. Five year old boy. They've kept it because a woman's instinct is so strong. Some of them is so weirdly strong. So weirdly strong. She can't let go of that boy or that child. She can't let go. Sleep here. Stay here. <sighs> five year old boy. He's seen his old father with white beard begging <laughs> that the man of God needs ministry. <laughs> this boy cannot be here. Service is not going to be able to hold. <laughs> I've seen old men beg. Oh. <laughs> I've seen old men beg. Because that mother's just, I had to kick my son out. Oh. You know how much I had nine months. I said, my friend, move. Your season is over. Your rent is over. And sleep on the bed. No, move, my friend. Can't be suffering the man of God. Oh. <laughs> because that woman's instinct, as a husband, you become secondary. Oh. She has shifted gear. Same way she abandoned her father and mother. <laughs> to follow you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, she's going to abandon you at some point. 
and listen, there must, there's a balance to it. If as a wife, you, you don't give those children that protection at that season, they too will lose something that will also affect them for the rest of their life. So the, what I'm saying is that there's a natural design, but there are also times you must override and know how to balance. God doesn't balance for you. God is not a manager, he's a producer. God doesn't manage. I've learned that over years. God manages nothing. That's why God can resource a country with all the great resources and the country can be poor. But you know that from God's end, he has done everything he should do. I, I told somebody in South Africa, I said, imagine if Africa, you know, you know, most of the world's natural resources are in Africa. I hope you know that. Most of them, the gold, diamonds, everything, they are on this side. Oil, everything is here. Most of those countries are, that are big countries, they don't even have much. There are some European countries that have nothing. I said, if with all the natural resources we have, we are still this broke. I said, imagine if we didn't even have. Imagine if there's no diamond in Sierra Leone, no oil or gold in Ghana. No, not imagine how poor. We have gold and, and we have um, oil in Nigeria. See how poor people are. Imagine eh? if there's no oil. We will go back to slave. We will be selling human beings. We will go back to slave trade and be selling our own people. Because hunger. So God doesn't manage. He has shared resources. He will go and watch you manage. So as a woman, your instincts will be changing. As a man, your instincts will be changing. You need to manage. Don't say, oh, my children. And when you see people that don't manage, that's why it leads to real conflict in marriage. Oh, my children. My children are my everything. Mm -mm. They will grow and go. And you see, the women that have not managed their instincts, by the time that child has now grown, they are finding it hard to leave. They are still following the boy. Grown man now. He's going to university. You follow him. He's the only one that his mother came with him. To university. Some of you know what I'm talking about. To check in. After the mother checking with him, all the other parents are going. She's still staying in his room. She can't leave. She's trying to do it by instinct. No. There will be a time as a mother, you need to consciously start letting go. Your emotions might still be there, but you have to let that boy grow. These are the mothers that go and cause trouble in the son's marriage. As more troublesome mother-in-law. They're the ones. They can't let go. He is now belongs to you. have passed the button. You have passed him. To his wife now. Leave them. The mother will still pass him and hold. I'm with you. <laughs> All the days of your I'll never leave you. <laughs> and there can't be two captains in one bus. So these are the women that now cause trouble. You see, a man is not wired with those attachments. After the attachment of his mom, they've thrown him out. He has no other attachment problems. So, a man is not naturally attached to a woman. He has to learn it. Again, this is where you override instincts. That's why in scripture, they will tell a man, love your wife. They don't tell women those things. Women are lovers. She's even drunk with love already. Women love love. So, no need to waste your time. It's a man they tell that love your wife. And they have to explain what they mean. And sacrifice yourself for her. Leave leave. This man, you tell those things because a man is not naturally attached. He, has, he doesn't have attachment issues. Because of the testosterone that flows in him, it cuts off the attachment. So let me explain. This is why whenever we teach on sex, it appears, it's very premarital sex, it appears we talk to women more. And I agree that men are even more responsible for sexual immorality going on. Men are largely leaders. However, we shout that because, so to women particularly because it kind of affects women more. Because women have a stronger attachment to sex. When a woman has sex, oxytocin and other hormones that lead to attachment flows. And this means whenever she's having sex, she finds it more difficult to break or detach from that person. That's why women find it more difficult to have casual sex or meaningless sex or emotionless sex or, you know, senseless sex. It's not a thing for women. They prefer a relationship. Men, on the other hand, when man has sex, the same oxytocin flows. But because he's also high on testosterone, it breaks the attachment. So a man can jump around and have sex with people he doesn't know and he will never meet again after that day. Women usually cannot, although the world is constantly trying to make women compete with men. So women too are trying to be loose now. They are just reacting. It's not their natural instinct. Whenever you see a woman just trying to sleep around, 
no matter even how much she tries, it can never be like, because it's not her natural instincts. They are just pressuring her to compete. This is why no matter how much you want to do it, prostitution will still be more of women selling and men buying. You can never see women going about saying, where are, where are men gathered that we can go and pick one? <laughs> In fact, they did a study. You talked about fine boy, fine girl. You know, they are not compatible. That's part of why they had problem. Fine boy, fine girl are not compatible. If we have time, we're going, because there are data for almost anything you want to imagine on this our field. That's why it pains when people think we are just jumping around. It's a study, it's a professional field. So most of the houses crashing in marriage, we know why it's crashing. It's the people that are surprised. He crashed, he crashed, he crashed now. See the cement where he used. <laughs> he go crash now. This cement can carry these weights now. Engineers know that. They are make sure you make of cement. He cannot carry this thing you are putting. So they found out when a boy and a girl are dating, if the boy is very fine, you know, he controls. That's how relationships work. Whoever is of higher value. If you are Chevron and negotiating, who has the highest uh, Chevron? <laughs> Do you understand? So they can say, no, you have to work on Saturday. We'll pay you whatever it takes. My brother, you work on Saturday. If you don't work on Saturday, your family will tell you, say, oh, bro, go and work. So whoever is higher negotiates better. So they found out that if a boy, if the guy is the one that is the finer boy, the handsome boy, whatever, he negotiates better. And usually they found out these guys have more casual sex partners. Because they, they, everybody's are aligning to what they want. They even found out that these guys, even when they're in a relationship, they are girlfriends or babe, they are okay with this guy having multiple sex. Because what's the option? She's trying to, she wants to be there by all means. For her, it's an upgrade. Are you getting how it goes? I'm not saying this is what you should do. I'm giving you data that exists, okay? Don't confuse what I'm saying. Now, they found out if the woman is the one that is finer, they found out that women that are finer have more long-term relationships. Because when a woman is the one in control, what she wants is marriage or relationship, not casual sex. When a man is the one in control, what he wants is freedom, not security. Men want freedom. Men actually want the opposite of what women want. Women want security. Men want freedom. Most men are working for their freedom. Women don't know. And when he's young, his mother was controlling him. His father was controlling him. He's saying, when I make him, I'll be free. And I went to marry you. And you are still trying to control him. He's working for his freedom. A man is working hard to be able to live, get to the point where he can do anything he wants to do. <laughs> a man wants freedom. So, in other words, a man's desire is very different from that of a woman. And God fashioned it like that. And in different seasons for a woman, like I said about sex, the oxytocin that flows makes her very attachment prone. Same thing when she's breastfeeding. She's, attachment is flowing between her and the baby. That's why the Bible says, can a woman forget her suckling child? They didn't say, can a man forget his suckling child? Where, where? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever a two teenagers or young children get pregnant, boy and girl get pregnant, the boy even denies the pregnancy. He will run. Of course, he'll forget it. It's the women that are worried because they are not wired to forget. He said, can a woman forget her suckling child, because chemically and hormonally, as she's breastfeeding, she's getting attached to that baby. Is somebody catching all these things? What am I trying to say? From when he said he made them male and female, that statement in itself is pregnant. If you don't know that, you think it's a casual statement. And the first thing he said after that, but trust the point, that you, man, you have problem with cleaving. Leave your father and mother. Go beyond your instinct and cleave to your wife because you don't, naturally don't want to cleave to anything except money. You want to be grooving life. So, if you are not careful, the man won't cleave to his wife. He won't cleave to his kids. You hardly have father-in-law problems. Of a father-in-law leave his own house, go and sit down in his children's house and decide they're married. Hardly. He will abandon them. He's an aban abandonist. <laughs> He's looking for freedom. Has no big issues with attachment. Abandon his children, abandon grandchildren, because all these people say they have a responsibility. He doesn't even want that responsibility. 
He wants to abandon everybody. He wants freedom. But so the Bible is teaching him attachment and teaching the woman to relax attachment. Is somebody catching what I'm saying? Hmm. So let's continue. So where did we stop, DJ? It says, and for this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twan shall be what? One flesh. Very powerful. He said, wherefore, they are no more twan. He see, they emphasized it. They are no more two, but what? One flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man do what? Put asunder. He said, what God has joined. So you are now one flesh. The whole idea of the team is for us to operate as one. Now, yesterday, we began to lay the foundation between, we said there are three kinds of marriages. How many people remember? What's the first kind of marriage we talked about? <laughs> Traditional kind of marriage. That's a marriage run by the culture and traditions of men. These cultures are varied. Cultures like, oh, I must impregnate my wife before I get married. Cultures like a man can have many wives. Cultures like a man can have concubines. Cultures like a man alone is the main provider and is also the lord of the rings and the lord of the home. <laughs> he can say and unsay. Nobody can ask him anything. He's unquestionable. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? That's the first kind of marriage. The second kind of marriage we established was what? Contemporary, Contemporary marriage. This is a marriage run by the trends. Whatever is trending today. That's what, they call, that's what the contemporary marriage is about. So it's, 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 it's trying to defend women even to the point that it begins to oppress men. Traditional marriages usually oppress women. And it's acceptable. We said yesterday that in, in the days of our parents, beating your wife is not a crime. That's why it's today in Nigeria, things like rape, abuse, they usually don't go far. Because when you take it to court or take it to police, the person you're going to meet there is a traditional man. Is how many beating them beat you? Just come out one of your eye. That's why you're complaining. <laughs> You'll be shocked when you go to police station or court for any of these kind of cases. It goes nowhere. Except if you mistakenly meet a woman as the judge. If it's a normal man, oh, if my husband is cheating on me, the judge has 13 wife. <laughs> what can he say for you? Say, your wife, your husband have only one extra wife. That's why you are here. <laughs> he has 13. So, in a traditional setting, women are oppressed and it's acceptable. In a contemporary marriage, men are oppressed and it's acceptable. So, abroad, many men are scared of traveling abroad, traveling with their wives abroad, because they will sleep on the couch. You shout at me, go and sleep on the couch. Or you don't even sleep at home. And if you call police, that's the worst. You will sleep two days in the cell. If you go to court, that's the worst. Because most of those judges are either single moms, or they are divorced, or they are oppressed. They are feminists. <laughs> they will definitely support the woman. Divorce is wired to favor the woman. You will keep paying her for the rest of your life. So most women threaten their husband with divorce. So it favors the women there. But a kingdom marriage is the third one. It's wired to favor both parties. It's for the well-being and nourishment of the family. Both people gain in a kingdom marriage. Traditional marriage, men get. Contemporary marriage, women get. Kingdom marriage, both get. And they don't get by trying to get. They get. By giving. So in a traditional marriage, the man is coming with greed and selfishness. Everything must favor me. You must serve me 13 pieces of meat. Kneel down to serve me. You see, everything is wired to favor him. You must kneel down to serve me food. When I can't sweep, I can't clean, nobody can talk to me. I go out whenever I like, I come back whenever I like. In a contemporary marriage, you, you don't know the amount of girls that want to go on a ladies night out and come back 1 a.m. The amount of married women that want to go to nightclub and go and shake their bum bum. Married women that want to keep in touch with their ex. Married women because they are in a contemporary marriage where they are always contesting and competing and fighting with a man. 
That's why you hear the saying, whatever a man can do. A woman, you know, there's no saying that whatever a woman can do, a man can do it. Men are not even... But women are always in competition. So that's a contemporary marriage. But in a kingdom marriage, they are both pouring in into each other. It is for two givers, not for two getters. Is somebody catching what I'm saying? It's for two what? Give us, not for two getters. A kingdom marriage is beautiful because the two people understand that they are wired and structured to pour into each other. It's so beautiful when you get it. Why do marriages break? It's selfishness. You always hear, I didn't, I didn't, you didn't. It's, it's about me, myself, and I. In a kingdom marriage, it's about you. I'm here to serve you. How can I serve you? When you understand how a kingdom marriage operates, a lot of the questions you want to ask are answered. In a contemporary marriage, the man is the one that is the slave. Because he's expected to work harder, pay all the bills. The woman is there to eat him, eat his money. She, that, in a contemporary marriage, you hear, his money is our money. My money is my money. She doesn't understand that a wife is a helper. She's coming with, a, with an eater mentality. When she's supposed to come in with what? A helper mentality. So that's the big difference. In a kingdom marriage, you are both coming with what can I give? In a traditional contemporary, is what can I get? And when two people are constantly trying to get, oppress the other, maltreat the other, the marriage will break down. When two come together and say, what can I give you? So the question shouldn't arise, who should cook? It shouldn't arise. It's the wrong question. Should a marriage be 50-50? Ah, when the, whenever I hear those conversations, it touches my, my kidney. <laughs> that, hey, our money, we, should, we contribute 50-50. He said, you, the two shall become one flesh. He repeated the next line, you are no longer two. He repeated it. You are no more two. You can't be saying, oh, 50-50, you bring 20%, I bring... No, 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 no. Wrong discussion. Who should cook? Uh, you cook, I wash the dishes. You wash the dishes, I cook. Uh, you are wrong discussion. Both partners should be constantly on a roll to be a blessing to each other. So, by the time both partners are on a roll to be a blessing to each other, it should be let the best man win. So who should cook? It depends. There are some houses where it's the man that should cook. Because that woman, she doesn't dare. <laughs> As my wife always says. I hope you know there are some women that are terrible cooks. Terrible cooks. And some men have incredible cooking ability. Sometimes the children even know. Say, so daddy cook us. Because you know when mommy cooks is horrible. <laughs> so you see, if you understand that we are both struggling to give each other, questions should not arise. Who should pay? No, that's not a question. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Now, instinctively, oh, as a woman, you're a nurturer. So being homely should come natural to you. A man should learn it. Okay? All men should learn it. However, for you as a woman, it's not an optional course. And this is not tradition. Again, there are some things women attribute to tradition. No. This one is both scientific, scriptural, and otherwise. You were created with food on you as a woman. Do you understand? Uh, just that before children come, other people or some other person <laughs> is taking advantage of it. But when children come, you'll find that these two things are food. They attach it to you in the design. There's a design. So you can't be asking, if, should I cook? There's food in your future. <laughs> There's food inside you. They've attached it. And it's not even detachable. You can't say, I'm angry. You, honey, hold one. Take the baby and say, <laughs> God says, you I trust. Food. So you can't be asking me who should cook. Wrong question. There's food here already. There's food already. Is somebody going to say, there's a design. There's a design. 
There's food. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Now, of course, as the baby outgrows the point of eating from here, if you live in certain areas where the woman doesn't have help or for some reason doesn't have skill, definitely the man should learn. We must always grow beyond the instinct. Remember that. But naturally speaking, you are wired with nurture. Not just physically, you're also wired emotionally with capacity to care. Again, that's why you have that grace for attachment that a man does not have. You are wired for it. Emotionally. If men give birth, if they give birth once, you nothing you want to do to make them come and give birth. But women, they will say, oh, this is so painful. I won't do it again. Till nine months after. They'll be glad to do it again. You see, God didn't leave it to chance. He wired them with an instinct and a soft spot for children. And women at any age, scientifically, they found out at any age when they see children, their hormones flow all over again. Even though they are married for many years. When they see a baby, they say, good day, good day, good day. <laughs> My wife, sometimes, when we go and visit somebody that has a new baby, she says, ah, she says, ah, I, are you sure I can't, I shouldn't do one more? this is how after many years our last one is is about eight years old but at any age we may still have that but god it will be it will be weird for god to only give you a physical capacity to carry children and not give you the emotional capacity it's like it's like making a phone to have capacity for something and not giving it software no it needs both the hardware and the software to work. So, you, you think God just gave you a womb and that's it. Then you are, you are a man with a womb. No, you are also more feminine. You are also more emotional. You are also more... Everything that requires for you to function with that womb was given to you. The man own... He, because he's, he's, he, he, he doesn't think of risk. He doesn't have attachment. Then his body is also physically stronger. He's bigger. He's faster. Because his job involves going to hunt. If he's like you, they will kill him in the, in the, in the wild. If, if there are two women, if there are two women are a risk, those of you that have done arm robbery before, <laughs> they are here now. Every good church has. <laughs> if you, okay, but I know you haven't done, but imagine you're an arm robber. You're an arm robber. It's imagination, wait now. Imagine you're an arm robber. They tell you that there are five guys or there are three guys in that house, and in this house there are three women. Which one will you rob? <laughs> Two women gather together is still a risk to them. If you are breaking cars to rob, <laughs> we were somewhere in Lagos one time, all these guys that come and break window came. We were four guys in the car. When the Hindu, all of us came down, and so I'm, I'm one of, I was one of the shortest. <laughs> we all came down, carry spanner, carry something. What's that they talk? What's that they find? <laughs> all the boys disappeared. If there were four ladies in that car, <laughs> how much will we give you? <laughs> How much? I have something small. <laughs> so, don't let anybody fool you into thinking men and women are the same. They're not. Why? Everything is why for the function. God made a man not to be too fearful. So that, that's why if you're a man, there's a video me and Pastor M wants to do. Things that should come natural to a man, things that should come natural to a woman. Because if you're a man, if you're too fearful, you can't function in this world. You, take, you must be ready to risk for Pastor Sunday to leave everything he could do and say he wants to do ministry. That's a risk. A man is wired to be able to do that. Or his family will die of hunger. The woman, on the other hand, she's wired for safety. Oh, don't touch my children. Let us stay on the bed. Let us live. My children. She's wired for security. If somebody gets what I'm saying, two women can't be in a household. Hunger will visit, visit them. Amber will visit them. The men are put there for security. Because when you know there's another man in the picture, you're going to be thinking twice that there will be a battle. When war broke out, Ukraine and Russia, I told you guys, I must have just said you here, when we were doing the tour in Canada, I met a Nigerian there. And he said he came from Ukraine to Canada as a refugee. So I said, ah, what happened? What happened? He said he had a Ukrainian passport. He was a Ukrainian citizen, living in Ukraine. When war broke out, they announced, women and children... Move to neighboring countries for safety. <laughs> All men report to duty 
1800 hours. <laughs> oh man. You see, in cases like that, there will be no feminists in that whole country. This feminist talk is only when everything is at peace. When the chips are down, we all know that there's two gender. We all of us know. I tell people how to know whether people believe what they say is when money comes in or risk of life comes in, you know what people really believe. Other people that say, men and women are the same. If they are in marketing, if you are marketing a truck, a tractor, things like that, you don't use women. You can never see a woman driving a tractor. Why would they want to buy this tractor? No, they know that when it comes to marketing, it's men that buy tractor. When they are selling perfume, when they are selling things, they know the gender to sell to. They know the gender is for. Nobody's going to invest their money on arguing feminism. Because it has something to lose, not just empty talk. When you go to a toy store for children, all the girls' side is pink. I did a video like that on YouTube. I went to Turkey one time. I entered a choice stuff. All the girls' side, dolls and pink. The guy side, the first section we saw, machine gun. <laughs> I said, this is somebody's money. He can't follow you and argue feminism. <laughs> He's investing how much million? <laughs> he will follow the pattern. Because it's clear. He can't be fighting. When chips are down, nobody's arguing the argument. It's only when there's no chips, no cost. They can argue. What men women can do, a woman can do, but until here, explosion. <laughs> until here, machine gun. Bra, 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 bra. There's all men go and fight. Are you not a man? <laughs> That's why you are you not a man. They said all women and children go to neighboring country for security. All the men report for war. Eh, Nigeria? <laughs> I, jack, I didn't jack back to come and fight. <laughs> I didn't jack back to come. I'm, I'm, I'm already, I'm, I ran from war. In my country, and I come here and do on that war. He tore his passport, threw it away. He tore his Ukrainian passport, threw it away, and went to report himself that he's a visitor. <laughs> yeah, so that's the only way he could leave. Because this, this report to duty is not that they will leave border open. No, they were manning border. No man is going out. <laughs> no man is going out. It's not Joko. It's war. You know, it's real war. It's not. Please not play. It's not play. We are wearing you uniform. So not be a joke. <laughs> Not be feminism, Michel, not real stuff. So he had to tear his Ukrainian passport, burn it, hide it, then bring out his old Nigerian passport. And say, you know, and his brother had visited him in Ukraine some time ago. So he used his brother's name. Because they will check your record now. Say he visited, oh, he stayed after he visited. Sure, I made one story story that could be verified. So then I let him, that's a let him escape. He ran to Canada. <laughs> Straight. Because we didn't come to fight war with Jack Pato for safety. I get what I'm saying. So a man is there for protection. So he's wired differently for his function. A woman on the other hand is wired differently for her own function. She has a womb. She has food attached to the womb. And she's made emotional. And she's given the gift for attachment. So she can't easily throw away that baby. If there's a man, there's hunger. He's carrying baby. You say, dear baby. Oh, man. Find your way. But a woman is giving that attachment. She can't let, a woman would rather starve to death than let her baby die. But most men, if chips are down, there's a young boy. Find your way. You get us this way. He has no attachment. That's why there are many men that travel out to go and hustle, leave their wife in another country. When they reach there, they marry on that person and continue from where they stopped. How many of you have heard those stories? He has zero attachment. He needs to learn it. I'll share one more. Because there are so many things that even scratch itself, I want to say. But I'm just trying to paint the picture that there's a point where you follow the design. There are also points where you now rise above your natural instincts. When the Bible said the man is the head and should lead, please, you also understand, it's not an argument issue. We are both, we are all wired for that function. A man is wired as a lead. That's why if you're a man in the house, maybe I'll pray for you today before we go into the Q&A. Because you are born a leader. Very different from how a woman is created and designed. A woman's role is to be adaptable. That's why in Genesis, when they said, therefore, um, I'll, I'll, um, it's not good for man to be alone, I'll make him a help meet. That phrase or word, help meet, is not help mate, oh, not help mate. We quote it as help mate. Husband and wife are not meet. It's help meet. What does that mean? See, it's a helper that is suitable and adaptable. 
So the way a woman is wired, she can adapt to whichever man she marries. If she marries a drug dealer, she will be the best drug dealer's wife. If she marries a pastor, she will be the best, best mommy geo. If she marries a businessman, she will be the best. She's wired with incredible flexibility. She's a product and a being of influence. Ladies, this is now important for you. You are created for influence. This is why you need to be careful who you are listening to. The confusion we are seeing online. How many times have you seen men come online and say, I slept with 13 girls? Nothing is there in sex. How many times do you see that? Guess who you see more? Come online to say, I is virgin too early. Or the, the one thing, one thing. You can't marry a man that doesn't. Women are products of influence. If you are constantly watching social media, those things you are watching are influencing you. They influence statistically, again. They influ it influences women more. If something happens nationally between a couple, the women take it home to their house. I was canceling one couple. I've forgotten what was a popular story, one of these popular celebrity issue. I think it's the one that uh, this footballer hid his money or something like that. So the wife was discussing it in the house, and the man said, hey, what's there? Is that... Eh? The man thought they were discussing that couple. I said, that discussion is not that couple. She's discussing, she's asking you. Every time a woman is talking to you, she's asking a question. Men don't know. No woman's statement is neutral. It's a question. She's saying, you say your own. That man cheated on his wife. What she's asking you is that, will you cheat on me? You're not going to say, hey, it's not just one cheating. Ah. <laughs> Every woman's statement is a question. That, that man, he went to hide his money with his mother. This man, eh, you think is a neutral statement. It's you. They're asking, what will you do? So your answer is, don't mind that useless man. How can he? How can he? <laughs> That's why I love you. My money, you are the owner of my money. It's a question. It's a job interview. <laughs> you must know how to answer. The man went to give neutral answer. The house scattered that day. I said that discussion was not about that couple. Because everything women watch. If somebody buys a car for his wife, ah, she's coming home. When will you buy me a car? This person, so person bought a car for his wife. It's not just though. She's asking you that one. Will I ever? Will I ever? <laughs> Because she's a product of influence. That's why Apostle Paul said, don't I have right to lead about a sister? No matter how women argue, their number one need, or one of their major needs, is a need for leadership. Forget all this one women argue. You know, what, one of the things women admire in a man is a man that can lead. No woman wants to marry a man that can lead. That's why in any situation, all the women gravitate toward the men in leadership. Automatically. Women love leadership. Women lo See, women love soft life. So, even though they act like they want to put them out in everything, they really want a man that can make all the decisions. They like for you to be to say, where are we going to live? What are we going to be next? They like, you, they like to know you, you know what you're doing. That's why women, are, when they ever say, what will you eat today? I say, I don't know. Stresses women out. They like you to know what you want, what they, she should want, what the family should want. Now, she'll not be adding her own spices, her own uh, fizzy into it, but she likes you to know you are. That's what. So, if you're a man here, if, I'm, if there's any prayer, I'll pray for you. It's for you to function in leadership. You're a born leader. They didn't want your opinion, they put it on you. It's not like election that you, you compete. No, this one is that if you're a male, leadership is compulsory. And you look, a woman loses more and more respect for you if you lack leadership ability. You can't have initiative. You can't look at the family and say, this is where we are going. Even if it's not the right place, be going somewhere. <laughs> Women like that. That like there's a vision. It might not be the right vision. We can change the vision level. She likes that we're going. Not like, what are we going to do? I don't know. <laughs> what are your plans? I don't know. What is it? I don't know. Because there are so many visionless men 
It is why there are women everywhere supporting other men's dreams. Because women, women must support something. Women must what? Support something. So if you're a man and you don't have dreams, or you're not secure enough to allow your wife to support the dream, she will go and support another man. Either in church, either in ministry, either in the office, either in government, she will go and she, she desires to put input. Jesus' ministry, who were the main supporters? So they were women. women. Women are generally more generous because they don't have attachment to material things. They have attachment to people. So men see money as a price. Women see money as a tool. So for women, spending money is more important. For men, making money is more important. So women are generally more generous. Those in business know that the way women buy. Women buy. Men, he knows what he suffered to get that money. He's thinking, thinking. Woman, we spend on that one, we come. Is somebody get what I'm saying? So they are more generous. Women supported Jesus' ministry. Women, so if a man, leadership, say, don't we have a right to lead a sister about? Men are created. And that's why a man is not so, so much created for influence. That's why if you're a woman, if you're going to marry a man, please marry a man that, number one, listens to God. Number two, has mentors and other men he listens to. Because he's not wired to hear. He's not created for influence. It's difficult to influence a man. It's easier to influence women. Who are those that learn raining songs first? Women. All music artists know that they are biggest fans. They know. Once just sing one song, you be, woo, women are ready to their top up. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> women are created for influence. Again, that's why I say, woman, you can't follow anybody. You can't follow, you can't expose yourself to any material. It's influencing you. If you listen to feminists, always complain about men. Listen to people that their more marriage is broken. Listen to people that are angry with men. They will be infusing you with that anger. Because you are wired like you, are, you soak up anything where you are. If a man, you are wired totally opposite. That's why the Bible said the heart of kings are in the hand of God. His wife can't talk to him. It's only God that can influence him. Men are not externally motivated. They are internally motivated. So they found out if a woman is the one that finds Christ first in the family, there's a very low, low chance that the whole family will get saved. Because she usually can't force the man to do anything. But if the man finds Christ, they say there's a high chance the whole family will find Christ. He's not created to be influenced. Instead, he's created to influence. He's a natural leader. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? There are so many, so many more. The point is this. At some levels, you will operate. So if you're a man, you are not wired to hear, for instance. When you now get married and you discover God gave you a woman as a gift, you will now start training yourself to consult her and listen to her before you make important decisions. Because there are many men that don't listen to their wives. So what do you know? I know everything. And you are making bad decisions that is wrecking the family. You'll be amazed how smart women are. When you, so he said the two of you are, you are no more two. You are now what? One. So you don't just make a decision. You don't just plan your finances. You always carry your wife along. You decide that we will never make any major decision in this family. Except both of us agree. Because two are better than one. So both of you are coming together, operating as one, tapping both resources. As a man, it won't come to you naturally. You don't, your ear doesn't work so well. Men are more internally motivated. What they want to do is what they will do. You can advise them from here to next year. If they've not trained themselves to listen to the influence of God, to the influence of mentors and other men ahead of them, this is important for you as a man, and to the influence of your wife. There is no man here, especially those that are already married. If you are listening to these three people I mentioned, you will always exceed whatever you dreamt for your life. If, number one, you, are, you, you train yourself to listen to God, that means you are not arguing with the word of God. Things that God has said, you are still arguing. There are many men here. The Bible is clear about premarital sex, you are still arguing. The Bible is clear about tithing and giving, you are arguing. You are hardened. No. You must be soft towards God. Whatever God is saying, you train yourself in meekness to listen to God. Then you submit yourself under the authority of other men that have gone ahead of you. Mentors, pastors, because they know something you don't know. Your journey will be smoother if you have other men 
that will say, mm, I made this mistake. Don't make the same mistake. There are many men like that I advise. Say, don't, don't. This is how to handle your money. This is how to handle this. This is how to handle that. If you see men that have crashed, you will find that they have nobody they are listening to. Only their friends. Your friends are ignorant like you. So when you mix too bad advice, it becomes worse. You need people that have gone ahead and are successful. Not that they've gone ahead in terms of age. It's that they have succeeded in marriage for 10 years. Mm, they will tell you that, no, you don't talk to women like that. They will coach you. And even if you, even if you don't have direct access to these men, which you should have, but even if you don't have, listen to their counsel. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Listen to their advice. You should have men speaking into your life regularly. Because you can't know everything. All you know is all you know. But all you know can't get you to where you need to be. So you need other things that other people know to add to that one that you know. Are you somebody getting what I'm saying? Then lastly, listen to your wife. It's a training. You know, I learned it the hard way when we started when we just got married. It's as, after I made one or two big mistakes. Mm. Now anything my wife says, I listen attentively. Doesn't mean I have to take every single thing, but I pay close attention now because I've, I've suffered before by not listening to her advice. Everybody she's suspicious of usually turns out suspicious. Everybody she's uncomfortable with turns out somehow. And she brings an incredible balance to your life as a man. Hallelujah. Before we do move into the Q&A, can I pray for all the men in the house this evening? <laughs> Leadership was thrown at you is by force. And how you behave will affect your family. A woman's number one need is a man that can lead. People think women are rebellious. They don't like submission. No, they are just worried about who they are trying to submit to. Women don't mind submission at all. See women in a salon, they submit very well. They have no problem with submission. If that most times they are bothered with the decisions you are making. And God has given us guidance how to make decisions. He said, as a man, you are the head and you must give yourself for her. If the decision favors her, if the decision shows sacrifice, decision shows love and care for her, she will gladly submit. Hallelujah. Can we pray? First of all, as a man, pray for yourself for one minute and say, Lord, I want to be the man that you have called me to be. A man that is disciplined, that has direction, that is a born leader, that can lead a home. I will be responsible. I will not be the one pulling my family back. I will not be the one arguing with scriptural wisdom. I will not be the one arguing with accountability. I will lead the way you have called me to lead. I will lead in a way that will make you proud. I will be the kind of man that my children want to emulate, the kind of man that my wife will admire. I want to be that man that she looks up to with admiration. I want to be that man that she looks up to with so much joy. I want to be that kind of a husband that binds the house together. I want to be the man that cultivates, cultivates the strengths and abilities of my wife, a secure leader. Not, not just a man that will allow my wife fly, but a man that will help my wife fly. I will help her to be the best version of herself. I will be a responsible man, a leader that cares. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for all the men, even though of different ages. I pray for all the men under the sound of my voice. Lord, you said in your word that the young men shall see vision and the old men shall dream dreams. I pray for every man that your life will be full of vision. You will know the next step to take. You will never lack vision. You will never lack ambition. You will be a man of direction in the name of Jesus. You will have clarity. You will be a leader worthy of emulation. You will be a leader worthy of admiration in the name of Jesus. Your ears will be open to the voice of the Lord. Your ears will be open to the voice of your mentors. And your ears will be open to the voice of your wife. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. 
Amen. Let's put our hands together for all the men. You can take your seats. All right. So we'll do Q&A. Are we going to do Q&A?